can do. So I'm back from church. Lovely service. Um, my pastor preached on he what, what was the title it was Why are you angry? Yeah, why are you angry? And um, we were in Genesis chapter four, one through seven, and it was basically about the Cain and Abel story on how um, Cain was angry. My pastor was trying to get to the root of anger, like because it was used Sunday, so it was it was for everybody. But I, he was making an example of youth today, how the youth today is so angry, we're killing each other, shooting each other. You know, old people do it too, but the youth. And so he was getting back to the first signs of anger was being shown in the Bible, and that was back with Cain and Abel. Uh, if you don't know the story, Cain was an older brother, and Abel was the little brother. Cain was the keeper of the ground. God cursed the ground, but back, you know, when Adam and Eve did the fruit and all that, God cursed the ground. But uh, Cain was the keeper of the ground, meaning that was his job, to take care of the ground. And Abel, his younger brother, what he kept the sheep. So when it came time for offering, Abel, um, he offered God his first, you know, the firstborn of the sheep or whatever. And Cain offered the fruit because that's all he had. He was, you know, the keeper of the ground. So he was angry, jealous, all those things, and he killed his own brother. And so we were just talking about um, anger, and I'm going to post a blog on that to get deeper into that. Um, I can't make this video about obedience because that's been something I've been dealing with. Um, this lady, after service, she gave a testimony on how she's been taking care of this older woman who um, lived up in Chicago. She had health issues and all this stuff. She was going back and forth traveling from Chicago to uh, Florida. She said one time she was um, on the airport. She had $7,000 on her in cash. She lost $7,000 of her cash at the airport here in Florida, but she was already on the plane when she had lost it. So she, when she realized, she lost it. So she just had to keep going. When she came back to Florida, she was thinking, no one's going to turn in $7,000. The economy is ridiculous. No one's going to do that. Everyone needs money. But she came back in the airport. Somebody turned in the money to the people at the airport and gave it to her. $7,000 in cash. She was obedient to God. She was obedient to what God was telling her to do. God placed on her heart to help take care of this. She's like in her 80s, 83 take care of this elder elderly woman. She stopped what she was doing here, and she went to go take care of a woman. In the midst of that, she lost her money. Well, she thought she lost her money. But then she got back, and she found, they found it. God gave it back to her, basically. And, you know, me, I'm taking that story so many different ways. Okay, she had $7,000 on her in cash. Chicago lately has been a lot of crime. What if she would have went to Chicago with that seven thousand dollars in cash? Someone could have killed her or robbed her for that seven thousand dollars in cash. So God kept the money here and saved hands for her to do her work up there in Chicago. Then she came back and she had her money. That's that's how I see it. That's what I see. You know, because why would God let her lose her money? You gotta understand, it's a lot more going on than just losing the money. God was protecting her in some form or fashion, and increasing her faith, and giving her a testimony that she can share with others. And that is just so profound on how God works. It, it's really amazing when you really sit back and think about the situations that you've been through, and then you look back and you can see where God had His hand in it the whole time, even when you think that He did it. He had His hand in it the whole time. But what I'm coming to say is to be obedient. When you're obedient to God, like I posted a status not too long ago because my pastor told me this. He said that when you're obedient to God, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people feel. What they're telling you, this, that, or the other. If God is telling you to do something, you have to do it. It doesn't matter what, you know, uh, what your mom says, what your dad says, grandma, sister. They're, they're your... They're your earthly parents. Understand that. 
Earth is a pathway for us. We're not, this is not our residence. My citizenship is not here on Earth. We're passing through. God is my Father. He is the ultimate person that I have to answer to. When it's all said and done, when it's done, and God told me to do something, he's going to ask me, Destiny, why didn't you do this? Because my mom told me not to. I'm your father. I told you what to do. You have to trust me. So we have to understand that no matter what people are saying, no matter what it looks like, even if you don't know, if, if you ask God what your purpose is, because this is what I did, I ask God, what is my purpose, what am I supposed to be doing? He gave it to me. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I want to do this for you, God. How am I going to do this? Doors just started opening slowly but surely. They just started opening. And then it felt like second nature. You just walked through that door. You just walked through that door because you're being obedient. And all the things that um, you think might be an obstacle or might be a problem, God made a way for them to get out. They're not a problem no more. They're not an obstacle. He'll change the hearts and the minds of the people around you once they see how dedicated you are to doing God's work. And that's ultimately what this life is about. We're living, you know, as Christians, uh, people who love God, people who want to serve God. We're, this is what we're called to do. We're called to worship. We're called to glorify His name. We're called to do the things that He has to do. It's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. People think, oh, sacrifice. You know, some religions you have to sacrifice animals or whatever. Be obedient. Because being obedient is a sacrifice in and of itself. Because you're letting go of your old worldly ways, your old mindset. You're letting go of those things and you're walking the path that God has caused you to do. So I'm just here to say this. Um, be obedient to God. No matter what it looks like, He will make a way. If you're like, God's telling me that I need to go here, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. Just have that faith to know that whatever whatever he needs you to do, he will do. He will make a way. God's work will get done, no matter what. No one can stop God's work. And if anyone tries to stop God's work, they really might want to pray about that because you don't want to feel the wrath of God from trying to hinder his child or hinder his people from doing his work. That is a very dangerous position to be in. So don't stop people from doing God's work. Um, but just just have that faith and know that God's going to take care of everything. I always say this because it's such a good analogy to me. God is not going to send you to the store with $20 knowing he wants you to buy something for $50. He's not going to leave you shorthanded. He's not going to leave you shortchanged. If he wants you to go to that store and purchase that $50 item, he's going to give you the $50, and he'll probably have change for tax. You know what I mean? He's going to make a way. He's going to provide. He's going to open those doors. Uh, you just have to trust him. You just have to trust him and hold on to his faith. You can't please God without faith. So you might want to do a faith check, too. But um, that's all I wanted to say is be obedient to God's will. Be obedient to his way. Ask him to help you be obedient if you don't know how. Um, ask him what you want, what he wants you to do. Ask him to show you the way, ask him to change your mindset. Just You ask God for all these things. He is our Heavenly Father. We can talk to him just like we talk to our blood parents. You can talk to him about these things, and he will give you the wisdom. If you ask for it, it's in the Bible. He'll give you the peace. Well, he's given us the peace. You just have to move in it. So just, um, yeah, be obedient, guys. If you love someone, tell them I love you. Bye.